Welcome class. Glad to have you back today. Today we're going to learn about the causes and effects of the War of 1812. You remember that every day we have a, a motto for the class. What is our motto most of the time? That's right, expect great things. Expect great things. Expect great things today. Expect great things tomorrow. Expect, expect great things in your life. Okay, I emailed you a form that I want you to put in your notebook. You can clip it in there. You can staple it in there. You can cut and paste it in there. But on this notebook exercise, we're going to fill it out as we go. If you look on it, it's called the War of 1812. It asks who, when, where, the causes, and the effects. And we're going to get most of that box filled out today. Write this down at the top of that uh, little notebook exercise or above it. Today's lesson objective is to learn the causes and effects of, of the War of 1812. Today we're going to learn the causes, go over them, discuss them, make sure that you understand them, and then tomorrow we're going as a group, we're going to learn the results or the effects of the War of 1812. Remember, in my classroom, when, I, when you're answering a question or when you're talking to me, you need to be standing up. We get, we get a little movement in my classroom. I want you to be very heavily involved. Okay, next slide. The War of 1812. I want everyone in class to stand up. I want you to get up. I want you to get as close as you can to the computer, and I want you to look at these two pictures that I put on there. Someone raised their hand and described to me the uniforms of the top soldiers. What color are those? Yes. Blue with white pants, absolutely. Have we seen any soldiers in our previous studies that was wearing blue with white pants when they were formal? Yes, the United States colonists. The colonists, the 13 colonists, when the formal army fought, they had blue and with white pants. Okay, look at the, someone else. Look at the bottom. Yes, those are red. Who was the main army in the world that always fought with red? Someone tell me. Yes, absolutely. Great Britain, the British, uh, England, the United Kingdom, we all call them, we call them many different names, but it was the British. And because of those red uniforms, what did they get called back in before, even before the Revolutionary War over in Europe? Anyone? It's a shellfish that I really like to eat. Yes, absolutely, the lobster backs. So they were the lobster backs. The red fighting the blue. We were the blue. The Americans were the blue. The British were the red. Great. Next slide. Did you get it right? Did everyone know who it was? Absolutely great. You should have remembered that back from when we studied the Revolutionary War. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the Revolutionary War and how the Revolutionary War and some of the things that happened then affected what was happening in the War of 1812. Use a little prior knowledge, a little things that you learned. All right, everybody can sit back down, and then if, you, if, if I call on you or you're answering a question, remember you're standing up in my class. Okay, the two countries that fought were, yes, the United States and Great Britain. That's correct. Now, the date that you need to put down on your notebook exercises. They fought from June of 1812 to February of 1815. Make sure you put that in there. Now, where did the battles take place? Where? First of all, you know it's going to be one place. Right, stand up, stand up. The United States, and then where else? Look at your hint down there. Your hint. It's another area that Great Britain controls or had a lot of influence in, in North America. North America. You should know your geography well enough by now. North America, what other big, large area? Stand up. Absolutely, Canada. Canada. Were where the two, Canada and the United States were where the battles took place. 
Now, I want you to pay particular attention to the United States flag that was flying during the War of 1812. Someone count and tell me how many stars there are. Remember, you stand up when I call on you. Yes, 15, 15 stars. Now, today, how many stars are on our flag today? Somebody, raise your hand, stand up. 50, there's 50 stars on our state today, and what does each one of them stand for? The states, that's exactly right. So back then, how many states do you think there were? There were 15 states, that's exactly right. Anybody wanna guess how many stripes they are, or do you wanna count them? Okay, take a second. Okay, yes ma'am. That's exactly right, there's 15 stripes. This is the only flag in the United States history that has 15 stars and 15 stripes. It's called the 15 star flag. Great, excellent. Next slide. Now, we talked about the causes, the causes and effects. The causes are equal to what? What's another word? Yeah, why? Why did the War of 1812 happen? The causes, what caused it to happen? Why did it happen? So why did the, to, so to learn why it happened, we're gonna look back at some of the things that went on, some prior knowledge that we talked about about a month ago about the Revolutionary War. Who was the Revolutionary War between? Stand up. That's right, the United States and Great Britain are the British. Now, out of that, or before that, what did the United States want from Great Britain? Yes, their independence. What did they, what did they pull out? What did they document that they make that gave them their independence from Great Britain? No, nope, stand up. Yes, absolutely. The direct Declaration of Independence because we wanted to be free from Great Britain rule. What do we celebrate every year in the summer? Absolutely, Independence Day. They need to do a lot of celebrating this year because of the COVID pandemic, but we usually do and usually make it a big family day with all this because it's a big deal in this country. <coughs> what were, what was the other document? What was the other document? The Constitution, great. The Constitution did what? What are the first 10 amendments of the Constitution called? Anybody? Yes, stand up. Excellent, the Bill of Rights. Thank you, sir. The Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments are called the Bill of Rights. Now, let's talk a little bit about those rights. If you look down the next one, it says economic reasons, Bill of Rights. What are we supposed to be able to do in the United States guaranteed by the Bill of Rights economically? Yes, we're supposed to be able to work where we want to, we're supposed to be able to get jobs, we're supposed to be able to work if we want to or not work if we want to. Some people are independently wealthy. They don't have to work every day. I have to work every day because I don't make a lot of money. How about y'all? Y'all going to have to work every day? Yeah, most of you are. Most of you are going to have to work, and you want to work in a job that you like, not somebody tells you and makes you work it. Make sense? Absolutely. Thank you. Now, citizen reasons. The first ten amendments goes back to the... Yes, the Bill of Rights. We have rights as citizens. What did the British do about those rights? Did they let us trade like they with who they, we wanted to? Did they let us uh, uh, have our own laws? Did they let us uh, decide where we were going, where we weren't? No, they didn't treat us like citizens. But we had already had those rights because of the Constitution and the amendments to it to be citizens. Citizens are treated like independent citizens, not under the whim of the state. And Great Britain didn't like that we were trading with people that they didn't want us to, and they didn't like that we had people working in, that, in those situations to trade with outside countries that they didn't want us to. Next slide. Causes, three causes, three main causes. What's another word for causes? Why? Why did it happen? Why did the War of 1812 happen? Look at that picture. Who do you think the British are? Stand up. Absolutely. They're the people in the red. How do the Americans look that are in the blue with the 
scarves and the yellow pants. How do they look? They look like they're glad to see them. Is that the way you invite relatives over your house? Is that the way you look? No, sta no, stand up. Yes, absolutely. They look like they're scared to death, like they're scared to go. So what was happening is Great Britain was fighting again. Who helped us out in the Revolutionary War that Great Britain always hated and always had wars with? France. Absolutely. They are fighting with France again. They are fighting with France again, as usual, for domination in Europe. And so, guess who we were trading with? Guess who we were trading with? Absolutely, we were trading with France, and Great Britain didn't like it. And because Great Britain didn't like it, they were going to stop us from doing that trade because they thought of us still as the colonies that were their trade partners. They wanted to get all the raw material from us. They wanted to manufacture it and then sell it back to us. We weren't doing that. We were more or less dealing with France. They didn't like it because they were fighting a war with them. So what they did is they stopped our ships, which were neutral. What does neutral mean? That's right, not on either side. Our ships were neutral, dealing, trading with France. Well, they'd stop our ships and take our sailors off. And look at how our sailors look. You think they like that? No. No, they didn't like that. So what did they do with them? Look down there at the bottom. It talks about impressment. They took our sailors off the ship and made them work on the British ship. Is that fair? No. No. What is it we, we take someone now in the United States? We take them, we don't let them do what they want to, and we stick them in a the building. What's that called? Jail? What's a bigger jail? Absolutely. Prison. Put in prison. That's the way I always have an easy way to remember impressment because impressment and prison sound a lot like. And that's what this was. They took these people from doing what they wanted to do, took them, made them work on British ships, doing their business, their bidding, and so I think of that as a little bit like, like a prison. Questions? Anyone? Anyone? Every, everyone understanding it? Good. Y'all are doing a great job on, the, on answering my questions. I couldn't do this without you without you answering. Okay. Third cause. There's three of them, remember. Now, you picture in your mind or look at this map and picture where the 13 colonies are. They're growing, they're expanding, they're getting, they're, getting more, they're getting more people all the time. Now me, when I grow and expand, I have to go buy different clothes because I get bigger all the time too. So I have to go get bigger pants and bigger shirts. The United States had to expand. Now which way do you think they were going to go? Are they going to go to the east? Or are they going to go to the west? Stand up. Absolutely. They're going to go to the west. That's where all the land's at. That's where all the raw materials are at. That's where all the minerals are at. Well, guess who's over there? Guess who's over there waiting for them? That's right. The Native Americans, the indigenous peoples of the, of the North American continent have already got all that land and settled on it. So the colonists figure they have ideas, and there's some leaders, war hawks, that decide that they want to do this. They want to expand us west no matter, no matter what no matter who it hurts. And it did hurt the indigenous peoples of, of North America. So we begin to spread to the, to the, the American colonists begin to spread to the west. And so if you'll look at this map, the big blue area to start with are all where the indigenous people live. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And now if you look at the orange, what is that? Someone look on that legend of that map and tell me what the orange areas are. Yes, those are reservations. How many of y'all watch uh, Yellowstone? Oh, there's several of you. Good. I like to watch it. Uh, it's a little rough sometimes, but I, li I like to watch it. And uh, do you see the troubles that John Dutton and the Yellowstone Ranch are always having with the people from the reservation? People from the reservation want it to be back like it was before the white settlers came and moved west and started taking their land. And that's the way they want it. They want part, part of their land back. They want it to be pristine like it was back then before the white settlers, the, the colonists moved, moved further west and just took their lands from them. 
we'll we'll study that later and you'll see that it, it's shameful a lot of the ways that we didn't treat the indigenous people taking their land and we took all those huge tribes and stuck them on these four or five six areas that are orange in color and took away all that land from them uh, definitely wasn't right but it was just it's part of our history good y'all are doing great any questions on cause what is another name for cause excellent why why something happened what are we talking about today someone tell me stand up yep the war of 1812 why the war of 1812 happened who was it between good the united states and great britain excellent excellent where have we studied about the united states and great britain fighting before absolutely the revolutionary war and the bad feelings that came from the revolutionary war sort of led up to what was happening in 1812 what were the three reasons why or the three causes of the war of 1812 right stopping our ships on the sea then what did they do with the sailors took them off there what's that called someone tell me someone help out diane what is that called not prison what's it called impressment absolutely great impressment now the next reason what else did we do yes we went west who did we hurt who did we take land from the indigenous peoples absolutely we did the native americans and we took it and we spread west so now we have a pretty good grasp of what the causes of the war of 1812 were where were they fought where was it fought yes canada and the united states great job great job today now tomorrow we're going to go into the uh re the results or the effects of the war of 1812. group a you're going to write a research paper you're going to re re you're going to be the ones that's basically teaching the results i want you to write a one-page paper on one result of the war of 1812 and be prepared to present it to the class tomorrow no copying no copying and pasting i don't want i don't want it cited i want you to use your own words and i want it written in complete sentences group b you're going to prepare a political cartoon remember we talked about those before who's going to be one of the bad guys you're going to draw in your political cartoon absolutely the british the british are hurting the american people the american colonists sailors any one of those you want to talk about that could be one could you draw american white american colonists as the bad guy well sure you could sure you could who were they hurting who were they hurting the indigenous people the native americans absolutely absolutely great job great job beautiful ideas okay group c group c excuse me you're going to create a chart with information about the major battles of the war five of them i want you to do five and on this chart i want you to do the date i want one column for the date i want one column for the location i want two columns or you can do it in one if you split it in half like a diagonal across it and let me know the casualties from each side on that battle and then i want you the next column i want it to be who won and then the last one i want you to uh, tell me some of the results the British won and took over this town. The, the United States won, took over this town. Uh, it was a close defeat for the U.S., so they didn't lose any 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 land or any property. Questions? Anyone about anything? As always, you can always email me. You can always text me and ask me questions. If we need to get back online and talk, we certainly will. I want to thank you today for your attention. I want to thank you for answering my questions. My classes don't work if you don't answer questions or you don't even try to answer questions. And y'all do a great job. I appreciate that. Uh, last thing, what's our motto? What are we going to do? Absolutely. We're going to expect great things. Thank you very much. And I hope you learned a little bit about the causes of the War of 1812.